Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Man has always peered fearfully into the future, dreading the glimpse that will show him all his dreams turned to dust. Several thousand years into our future, this man, astronaut Taylor, has had his glimpse of nightmare. He clings to sanity, but only barely. So now I know. I've traveled through a time warp in space thousands of years into the future and back to my own planet. And now I know that sometime after I left, my people went the way of nuclear destruction. If only they could see their legacy. What's left of the world is topsy-turvy. Apes, talking apes, rule Earth. Humans are mute animals, like you, my lovely Nova. Where do we go from here? Back there are the apes thirsting for my blood. Ahead, what? Well, be it ever so humble. That was home, Nova, but it's certain that nobody's home now to welcome us. Fire! How? What's feeding it? The fire's gone. I don't get it. Either I've lost my mind or... But you saw it, Nova. And the horse. Let's try again. Whoa! I don't know what's happening here, but I'll have to go ahead alone, Nova. Wear this, Nova. If anything happens, go back to Abe City. Find Zira. Zira. The chimpanzee psychologist. She'll help you. And keep away from the gorillas. Ice? Am I having hallucinations? Is there something supernatural trying to block my way? I'll hack my way through. Oh! Gone. Ice and Taylor both. The grim wreckage of a great city shimmers in an eerie stillness as silent as Nova's scream. Distraught and bewildered, Nova rides aimlessly toward a sight that will only confuse her more. Skipper, speak to me. It's Brent. Skipper, hang on. Wh where are we? I don't know. We were following Taylor's exact trajectory and probably duplicated his fate. I don't know where we are, but the smashed instruments tell us when. 3955 A.D. You shouldn't joke at a time. A time. Skipper! What a fool's errand. Searching for a lost spaceship. Now there are two. Hello. Oh, no. I'm dreaming. None of this is true. You don't smash up a spaceship and step out to meet a beautiful ragamuffin out for a morning canter? Uh, I am friend. Brent. Do you understand? Whoops. No sale. Wait. I look for Taylor. Taylor. The name strikes a responsive chord in Nova. Taylor. We came down right on target. To his dismay, Brent soon learns that Nova is mute. Where? Where is Taylor? Well, nothing ventured. Let's look, huh? Maybe somebody around here can speak. Under a slack rein, the horse heads for home. I've never seen such desolation. We always thought there must be life on other planets. But who'd bet on one like this? Hey, vegetation! Things are looking up. Brent's voice reminds Nova of Taylor. She is almost peaceful, till her animal sharp eyes spot something. Hey, what? General Ursus has called for a giant rally at the arena tonight. At last, action! Gorillas? In uniform? On horseback? And talking? Wow! They'll never believe this back home. As soon as it's dark, baby, we find that arena. I alone can lead you to victory over the unknown enemy that lurks in the forbidden zone. An enemy that threatens our very existence. Are they human? This threat to our ape civilization? If so, we shall wipe them out. Along with them, are they human now eating our food, crowding us off our precious land? Ursus, leave us! Ursus, leave us! It's like something from mankind's past, seen in an ape's nightmare. 
Let's get away from here while we can. Suddenly, Nova grabs Brent's arm and points at two chimpanzees slipping out of the arena. The gorillas have gone mad, Zira. Imagine civilized apes going to war. They're not apes, Cornelius. Gorillas. They're not fit to be called apes. Oh, no. You've come back. Is that Taylor with you? No, I'm Brent. You know Taylor? Another talking human. Oh, we had great affection for Taylor. Zira saved him from death and worse at the hands of... But never mind. You must leave immediately. The gorillas lost for war. They've been seeking a pretext, and now scouts have disappeared in the forbidden zone. No human will be safe. Probably no chimpanzees either. Go! Do not fall into their hands. Two chimpanzees disappear into the night. They're gone. Nova, I've never met a girl with such interesting friends. War! War! I can smell it. Hey, either you're beginning to understand or you have a keen nose. You know, back home, the trouble with most women was that they talked too much. Suddenly, the angry whine of a bullet. Gorillas. Starting now, I follow my chimpanzee's advice. Brent's skillful riding frustrates his pursuers. But as they race deep into the forbidden zone to the outskirts of a molten ruin, the glassy crust beneath them gives way. Stunned, Brent vaguely hears the disappearing clatter of his horse's hooves. He squints at a great underground cavern. Oh, no! Nova, do you realize... Taylor, you're telling me that he made the same discovery. This is Earth. My Earth. And mankind blew it. I wonder when. As if it makes any difference. Nova, is that light ahead? Is this an underground city or graveyard? Suddenly, weird, compelling organ music fills the square. Music? Do you hear it, Nova? Do you hear a voice, too? Come to the cathedral. The music is coming from there, but the voice is inside my head. Speaking in a whisper, Brent holds Nova to the shadows. They're praying. They're not making a sound, but I can hear their prayer. Oh, Lord, look what they're worshiping. An atomic bomb. Do you hear them? We reveal our inner selves to our maker. The strange worshippers pull at their faces. Despite himself, a strangled cry escapes Brent. As he sees the ghastly heritage of atomic radiation, the bomb is indeed their maker. Immediately, Brent and Nova are surrounded by mutants and bombarded by telepathic questions. I'm from your past. I seek a man named Taylor. Please, cover your faces. Yes, I know Taylor. You mean he's alive? Temporarily? What do you mean? Brent? An incredible reunion. I haven't seen you for 2,000 years. Yes, I should have left a message. Meet me in the cathedral under the atom bomb. That's the Alpha Omega bomb, Brent. Do you know what that means? That's the Doomsday bomb, built as a deterrent to war back in the 1970s. Evidently, it didn't stop atomic warfare. But if that one had gone off, not even this much would have been left. A chain reaction would have destroyed even the planet itself. Exactly. That is precisely why we worship it, as an instrument of peace. You can speak. Of course. We usually bypass such primitive communication, but with primitives... Well, listen to this primitive. Diffuse that bomb. If the gorillas ever lay hands on it... Gorillas? Gorillas. Marching on this city right now. The gorillas are indeed marching to the outskirts of the city, where they are stopped. A great wall of fire! Our enemy is mighty! Gorillas! Ha, ha, ha! How will they pass our wall of fire? Our bottomless chasm? Our precipice of ice? Illusions! All illusions! What if they're all too thick to be frightened off? Great challenges ask us to achieve greatness! Follow! Amid the thunder of thousands of hooves, the gorillas blindly follow their leader. General, the flames have no heat. Illusion! Our enemy hopes to beat us with illusion! Then they are clever. Perhaps too clever for us. Nonsense! This means they are weak! 
and the gorilla hordes ride over a chasm and through a precipice of ice. Your Excellency, gorilla troops are streaming into our city. The bomb. Let me try to defuse it. You will stay where you are. The mutant chief projects paralyzing thought waves. My head. I can't move. The power of the bomb will preserve peace. The great doors burst open. Halt! Or face destruction! Another mighty illusion, puny human! Stop! Both of you! Enough! Play! So be it! The bomb glows with deadly heat. In the hum of doom, Nova speaks her first and last word. This unspeakable explosion, the city once again, and for all time, is destroyed. And in the doomsday chain reaction, so also is the planet called Earth. And now we too have seen the future. Must it be our future? Now that we know, can we make sure it will not be 